Our first guest tonight has an incredible story to tell from growing up on an Indian reservation in Alabama all the way to achieving his official UFC contract and with so much more to come. Please welcome UFC fighter, I know I'm gonna say this wrong, Chattatuska, Brock Weaver. <laughs> Now, where are you from originally? I'm from Magintosh, yeah, okay. on the reservation. Um, and now, uh, did you know your roots growing up as far as the whole yeah. Native American thing? Yeah, uh, I was in school uh, in, through kindergarten. We had a we went to an all tour school called Reed's Chapel. It's actually still there. I actually made a gym out of it when I first started training out of the cafeteria part, I turned into a gym, trained some of our youth. But going to school, uh, we had Indian ed from kindergarten to fourth grade. It, we, it taught us how to, uh, you know, uh, our language, obviously, uh, how to bead, how to make uh, weapons, you know, just a light way, how to uh, make TPs. We've done uh, field trips to the uh, Moa land, which is where we have our powwows uh, occasionally. The best part about it, we, we forgot our language a lot of when you get out of fourth grade and you you know it, They actually cut it out after fourth grade for some reason and now they don't have it all at there anymore And I think one of my grades is like one of the last ones to actually get it and um, we, we just love getting out of math class and getting to get a break for two hours really and Well, it's it's like anything else than anybody I think people when they when there's a subject that they love they tend to cling to it and and, and absorb it more yeah. when it's taught and so when you're saying getting out of math, then again, maybe it wasn't so much getting out of math as it was, this was your culture. This yeah. is something you wanted to learn. So you're saying they don't teach it in the schools anymore? They don't teach it in the schools anymore. We, we moved from Reese Chapel and uh, it, was ba it was basically an all uh, Moab school and I guess uh, uh, racism or something maybe come as, as kids, I really didn't know the idea why they moved to, us, to, the, to the Borkin school, which is in McIntosh on the 43. I don't know the reason that they moved us there, but uh, Coming, I guess it was they. They didn't want us to get special attention, or they didn't want them getting special attention. They just wanted the, the schools to mix, or maybe the school would run out of money and we couldn't get funds anymore because we're only a state recognized tribe. That's the whole goal of my uh, my, comp, my my goals. You know, is to is to help federal recognize my tribe, get my tribe known as as a uh, you know a federal uh, tribe around the world because we have we have so many uh, bad names being. Uh, half breeds and stuff like that you know so see the thing is is i didn't i didn't know about the whole cultural you know education thing up to the fourth grade thing and when you were telling me about it, i'm like wow this is great this is a wonderful thing i was thinking that's so fantastic and then you tell me they don't do it anymore it would be great if somebody started an initiative yeah. to try to get that back into into the into the schools yeah. um now let's jump forward a little bit your boxing journey started when what you were like 15 right 12 12 now you had some what cousins who were already semi-pro or yeah. yeah i had um actually my he's my cousin but we called him uncle nick he's a local police officer on the reservation he was a 10 and 0 pro at the time uh boxer but his amateur career he actually boxed roy jones jr six times and uh i know y'all had roy then y'all had roy, yeah, had roy, roy yeah. was our first and second episodes yeah and um he my uncle actually beat roy i think it was like three and three or something, you know, and Roy still is there to the day, man. Your uncle was, he, he, I could hit him as hard as I could and he would he would never stop coming. He's like, the chins y'all have. And I, the, the people, he's like, he boxed a couple other people. He's like, everybody had a chin, everybody had heart. And no matter how hard you hit us, we would still keep coming. He's like, I think your uncle Nick still coming, still keeps coming today, you know. And, uh, and that's a, a big thing, you know, was, was boxing around there. And, and when he opened it up when I was 12, he had a, he was trying to come back in and, and uh, make a, make a career again out of it. And he didn't, and he had a couple of kids, but he had some headache problems or something. So he had to stop. The doctor said he couldn't do it. So he closed our gym down cause we couldn't get the funds in it. And um, I took a break. I, I didn't, I didn't box from 13 to 15 and my older cousins were, uh, pro fighters, they were, they wouldn't see my pro. They were pro fighters. They just never went amateur because back then you could, if you had a couple matches in a uh, tough man contest, you could go and get your pro license if you pay like two hundred dollars. So they jumped and went pro. And uh, one of them, James Orso, he was a 
the big fighter around the reservation at the time. He was knocking people out left and right. I think he, before he retired, he was seven and four. He fought on the uh, pay-per-view here in Biloxi at Blood and Sand when uh, Bobby Lashley and uh, Bob Sapp actually fought. That was a big card. He fought on it on TV and it was like, you know, it was a big deal at the time. And then he retired after that because he had some knee in injuries, but uh, he was still trying to get back in it when I, he started training me. And man, I was 15 years old sparring with two ounce gloves, getting knocked out by these dudes. These dudes are ruthless. They ain't show no mercy. And but it helped. It helped uh, make me because uh, I was like, man, if I can stand in the ring with these guys, that's 20 pounds bigger than me, pro fighters. Ain't nobody gonna be able to stop me in, in amateur. At my, at, you know. But I I lost a lot in amateur too, and uh, it was just live and learn. You know, every fight. You know, uh, my amateur career went up and down. I had to I had to get. They they quit they quit on me so I had to go find another team and then another team and I've been bouncing around traveling and just since I was 15 years old man I, I'm 27 now I ain't really took no break at it you know well Brock what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to break for a minute uh, and then we'll come back and we'll finish speaking with Brock Weaver. <laughs> 